Hey, for my uh, rant over at HartmanReport.com, I, I put a, uh, a, a chapter excerpt from my book, uh, you know, The Hidden History of Healthcare, Why Sickness Bankrupts You and Makes Others Insanely Rich. And it's titled, Time to End the Medicare Scam. And, you know, l last week, a hundred demo over a hundred Democratic lawmakers signed a piece of legislation or introduced a piece of legislation, co-sponsored a piece of legislation that would uh, drop the Medicare eligibility age from 65 to 60. And this is just this just makes common sense, uh, particularly in a time where we have we have apparently permanently lost at least five million jobs uh, as a result of COVID and all the disruptions. Perhaps some some are suggesting as many as eight to ten million jobs. Um, and what's happening is increasingly those jobs, the jobs that are still around are being filled by young people rather than older people. People over 60 are finding it harder and harder and harder to find a, find a gig in the workplace. And so, hey, let's drop Medicare eligibility age to 60. And I would add, let's drop Social Security to 60, but that's a whole other argument. But that's just one, you know, small problem that needs fixing, which is that, you know, Medicare is at 65. Um, the biggest problem, in my opinion, is Medicare Advantage, which is not Medicare. And this is the thing that most people don't realize, is that Medicare Advantage is a massive trillion-dollar ripoff of the federal government, a ripoff of taxpayers, and frankly, a ripoff of many of the people who sign up for these so-called Advantage plans. And it's also one of the most effective ways that insurance companies can kill Medicare for all. About a third of all the people on, the advan uh, on Medicare or who think they're on Medicare are actually on Medicare Advantage plans. You know, from nearly from its beginning, Medicare allowed private companies to offer uh, insurance to people over 65. But they, it was a very, very tiny marginal part of the marketplace. But in 2003, with the uh, Medicare Modernization Act of 2003, George W. Bush and his buddies pushed through this thing, allowing private companies to call their private policies Medicare Advantage and giving them reimbursement, not just for all their expenses, but for all their expenses based on, on this, uh, you know, this uh, label, this this uh, uh, tag, as it were. They they they're called the risk score. And so what they do when you when in many cases, if you sign up for Medicare Advantage, they'll send a nurse out to your house, and and you think, oh wow, I'm getting personalized service. Well, what the nurse is actually doing is uh, looking for things that can increase your risk score, which means that the Medicare Advantage company gets more money from the federal government, even though they don't provide you with services. For example, heart failure, right? Heart failure sounds like, oh my God, my heart failed. But in fact, it can be just a little tiny abnormality on your EKG that you just watch for the next 10 or 15 years because it means you might be at a little higher risk, but that's it. Or it might be in that, you know, a week from now you're dead. But it, in either case, if they can identify that, then they make more money. They don't have to provide you with any more services, but they make more money. The same thing with depression. Are you, have you ever been depressed? Well, yeah, I was kind of sad when my husband died. Well, uh, did it last more than two weeks? Because here's the key. If it lasts less than two weeks, Medicare doesn't, you know, the, the score, as it were, the risk score doesn't go up. If it lasts more than two weeks, like one day more than two weeks, suddenly Medicare gives these insurance companies piles of money. They don't have to share it with you. They don't have to do anything for you. And on top of that, they are just like robbing us blind. I mean, this is, this is uh, the Center for Public Integrity back in 2014 did this study. And here are the, some of the things they found um, that risk scores, in other words, this, this way of trying to make it seem like people are more expensive, but they're not. Risk scores for Advantage patients rose sharply in a thousand counties nationwide, boosting taxpayer costs by 36 billion over the costs. In other words, profit. In more than 200 of those counties, the cost of Medicare Advantage plans went as 25% higher than providing standard Medicare. And it goes on from there. It is, and, and, and by the way, you know, if you've got a Medicare, if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, you can say, well, everything's wonderful. I had a guy tweet to me this morning. I've been on one for 10 years, had no problems. And I'm like, I'll bet you've never been seriously sick. Because when you get seriously sick, A, you're going to find it really hard to get reimbursed and you're going to get hit with things. Or B, even if you're not, you're going to discover that in the future, it's going to be really difficult dealing with these guys.